the common tendency that we're going to be talking about today is um, uh, general technique issues behind the serve. Um, I know this is probably not a meaty topic, but we can, we can definitely touch on it. A um, couple things that I see um, off the bat is if the, uh, just think about like technique in general should be like a math equation. Everything uh, needs to be correct from start to finish. So if the ball toss is jamming you, you're gonna find yourself having to dig out. I, I, I call it a can opener, this little can opener swing. Usually it ends up uh, you losing consistency, uh, not being as precise with your location and just all in all, it's tough to get power from there. Um, next one is um, guiding the serve, uh, maybe not trusting your, your paddle head speed um, or maybe simply just standing too upright, using too much arm, not, not connecting big body parts, not trusting that kinetic chain. Obviously too, take into account skill set and levels. Yeah. I mean, lower levels, obviously, if you're not as consistent, you probably shouldn't be striping the serve, uh, you know, uh, or, or, or you shouldn't be adding a lot of paddle head speed in, probably more so you're, you're just going to be guiding it. But people who, I guess, are looking to be aggressive on the serve, um, but they're guiding it, know that you're doing it the wrong way. If you're going to trust your serve, um, you need to focus on trusting your paddle head speed, trusting the formula of topspin, and really going after the serve. With this segment, we don't want everybody to feel like they absolutely have to change their serve. And uh, you know, if you've got a serve that's a little bit more limited, but you're able to make it you know, 95% of the time and it's deep, deep and it works for you, just take all of this with a grain of salt. But if you're looking to turn your serve into more of a weapon, we're gonna give you kind of the, the hints and the checkpoints that you're gonna need to have, like that math equation like Tyson was talking about, to be able to use more big muscles and big body parts and add a little bit more easy power. And you know, we can also talk about why to use the serve as a weapon. With the way the game's changing, um, it really does make your neck Next shot, whether that's a third shot drive or a third shot drop, it enhances your effectiveness on your next shot. The first drill that we're going to be talking about here is the first progression um, of this of this segment here. Uh, more so, it's going to be focused around uh, technical issues on the serve. Um, so we're going to get back to shadow swinging. Anytime that we're working on technique or working on the fundamentals, we always like to go back to the basics. You know, really uh, find find the general foundation first. Um, so so focus here. Uh, we're going to be uh, shadow swinging with a ball in hand. Um, you know, like a uh, couple things that we're going to be focused on here is spacing from the hip, keeping that spacing from the hip, um, you know, getting some coil and then uncoiling, getting the hips, getting the belly button facing at the target, um, keeping those upper extremities quiet, and then just getting good extension uh, as we let the ball go. Okay, um, I'm going to show you uh, the uh, uh, technique preparation that, that I get into on my serve, and then Coach Kyle is going to show you his technique as well. Uh, my, my technique, um, I tend to rock back, add a little coil uh, to a, a bit more advanced here, add a coil, and then also to um, exaggerate my loop, bring this around, and then uh, uh, get my weight going forward and serve into the box there. Okay, so it's going to look just like this. Okay, Coach Kyle, go ahead here. Okay. So mine's a little bit, a little bit of a different motion. I feel like I, I, I like to line up uh, quite a bit behind the line and uh, allow myself enough space to take two full steps. And that way, my logic is if I have that much forward momentum, I don't really need to do as much with my arm, and it forces me to make sure I'm getting my power from my leg. So I'm going to off-center my hips a little bit uh, because I want to get my shoulders and hips rotation through the shot as well. And my indicator for lining up my left and right and keeping it straight is I want to finish with my belly button after I rotate through towards the target that I'm going for. So off-center the hips, stand back, belly button at the target. Okay. So we all serve, all serve again here. Okay, same thing. Um, Kyle's obviously moving into his serve. I'm more of a platform server. Feet are still. Rotate. Okay. Okay, same thing again. Okay, and Coach Kyle, you obviously don't have a loop, correct? I don't have a loop. Okay, nope. okay you nope. lay it straight down. So now we're going to uh, add in a paddle. Okay. Okay, paddle, no ball. Okay. So same idea, lining up. Um, I'm envisioning that I'm doing my routine here. Okay. Okay. Okay, same thing here. Bounce the ball twice. Good, good, I like it. Okay guys, second drill here. Um, I'm gonna be acting as as a student, Coach Kyle is going to be acting as the teacher here. 
So um, I'm gonna add variety in on the serve, more so this is just serve practice for me. Um, we obviously have the half court uh, taped up there, so we have two different zones. We have the transition zone and then the short transition zone. Um, so, so essentially I am uh, mixing up a hard serve uh, that is pretty aggressive, and then I'm gonna mix up a floater or a lob serve um, that uh, changes the rhythm, forces, forces the returner to feel uncomfortable, um, rock and roll. So yeah, as, as, the, as the teacher here, I'm, I'm definitely getting a, a pretty good benefit because as Tyson's is, is adjusting his types of serves, you'll see that I'm going to have to adjust my returning technique and get some good practice for each scenario as well. Both sides are getting a benefit here. Okay, um, anytime we serve, obviously focus on your routine first. Okay, got my routine. Okay, very nice, very nice, very nice. Again, again, again. I'm gonna add in a loopy serve here. So as far as technique on, on the lob serve or on the loopy serve, um, you know, as I do my loop, I am more so getting under the ball, lifting up, but I would say that I'm really only touching the back 20%. So I'm really, I'm not going through it, I'm more so going up it, and then as I go up it and hit the back 20%, that's gonna give me plenty of shape. Okay, ready here, back 20%, plenty of shape, okay. You know, with that serve, I'm trying to get the point of contact up a little higher, force Kyle to feel uncomfortable. Hard serve, ready here, hard ball. Okay, beautiful. Okay, different, different hitting zone there. Yeah, absolutely. So I think as Tyson's focused more on speed and pace, the, the ball shape tends to be a little bit more linear. As the returner, if, I've, uh, if I'm facing a, a, a more aggressive server with it being a little bit more linear, I'm gonna adjust my take back. I don't want this big backswing because it's gonna be so much more difficult to get that appropriate contact point out in front. It's gonna be really easy for me to be late. So I'm gonna have a shorter take back, use more of my legs, and then still have that full follow through. Um, whereas if Tyson's serving slower, um, that kind of that change up off speed higher serve, my contact point might be a little bit higher and I'm going to want to adjust maybe a slightly bigger take back and, and all the way through. So I don't need to shorten my take back as much when he's serving deeper and slower, but especially when it's a hard, fast serve, um, you really don't need that big wind up. You can keep it more out in front and then just make sure you're following through. Like it, lob serve here, um, getting a bit more under, touching the back 20%, low to high. Okay, good. Okay, hard serve here. Okay, using my legs, getting this full coil, okay, uh, getting my weight transfer going at the ball. Ready here, bounce the ball twice, open up my loop, coil, and then uncoil. Okay, um, what I've noticed uh, that causes inconsistency when I serve aggressively, it's not so much hitting my spots, uh, but more so going heavy and big or, or heavy and deep at my opponent's body. Now, this is, this is probably a, a little situational. Lower levels, obviously, if you find a weaker side, we, we want to more so be you know, pinpoint at that particular side. Higher levels, if you find that both sides are pretty even, that's when you can you know, serve deep, but more so go at their body and force them to have to create space. I, I, I kid you not, I, I see a lot of unforced errors and I see a lot of shorter replies in this scenario by trying to go, if I have a righty, I try to go at that righty's right hip and force them to really have to generate space. And when they do that, they're, they're moving laterally yeah. and so all their weight transfer is not going at the ball. Yeah, so I mean, good returners know that they need to be you know, working their way in, getting up and getting established. So by forcing them to slide to the side, they've got to then collect their weight yeah, right. and then go. So it's one where even if you aren't getting missed returns, you might be able to open up more options on your next shot if they're not as far in and established. That's true, for sure. Yeah, I like it. Ready here? Loop, loop or surf. Okay. Under. So I'm creating more pace there. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Anytime I give Kyle's uh, pace, he's going to be using it. Anytime I give him less pace, he's going to have to generate his own. Okay, pace. Okay, had to take a half volley there. Yeah, it was pretty Nothing good wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger take back. Beautiful. Okay guys, so a uh, drill recap for the serving technique. We started out uh, paddles down, uh, just focused on our body positioning with the toss, worked on off-centering our hips. Tyson and I each showed you kind of our general service motion as far as tossing the ball and, and using our whole body. Um, uh, second progression, we put the paddles in hand but still just worked that shadow swing. 
Tyson's motion, he's a little bit more stationary and he really winds up and gets that exaggerated kind of centrifugal motion with the loop and generates all that pace with the body rocking back and going forward. Uh, my motion is a little bit different. I, I stand quite a bit off the line and I plan for two full steps of momentum to try to go all the way through. I don't have as much of a loop, but I probably have even more forward momentum being thrown into my serve uh, than Tyson does with just, uh, just with how far back I'm standing. Um, as far as the, the serve technique, it's not something where everybody needs to change, but if you feel like you have a pretty simplified motion where your hips are uh, facing straight and you're just kind of low to high, almost like a bowling motion, nothing necessarily wrong with that, but you're going to be a little bit limited on what you're able to do as far as turning your serve into a weapon. Um, next drill that we did, we had uh, Tyson back serving. I was returning. Tyson basically showed two types of serves, his normal service motion for a harder, a little bit more linear ball. Um, I had to adjust as the returner my take back to be a lot shorter, getting ready to use Tyson's pace, um, pushing off with my legs and uh, propelling myself into the, into the return. Um, whereas Tyson's second serve, which is more of a lob serve, he gave it more of a, a kissing that back 20%, not as much out, but more up with the arm. Um, but that serve, because it was so much slower and, and deeper for me, I had to generate more of my own pace, which meant my take back is going to be a little bit further. So that's the biggest difference as a returner, adjusting that take back to how much pace is coming at you. Okay guys, game here. Uh, we're going to do another modified version of skinny singles uh, with the primary focus being on the server. Um, the only bonus point here within the point is that if the server gets the serve in the transition zone, um, obviously I'm serving from this side, but here we, we, we see our half court line here. If I can serve obviously past this line in the transition box, I would get one point and then we're just going to play the point out. Okay, so main focus uh, for the server obviously is depth. Um, Coach Kyle is, you know, keeping the theme of, of, you know, trying to get up, get established, and then we're just going to play the point out. Okay, um, we're going to play two or three points on this side, and then we will switch. Rally scoring, I like okay, it. Ready here? Let's do it. All right, too good. Okay. So that'd be, you got two there, his yep, serve was yep, deep yep, enough. Yep. And he won the points, so it's going to be zero, two, okay. alternating, my turn to serve. Okay, right. uh, serve was deep. Okay, yep. so, okay, so I get uh, score one. is three to one. Three one, I like it. We're not it. gonna um, cancel them out. Do we wanna go this side now? Inside, yep, let's go two and switch, I like it. Ready here? Yep. <gasps> oh, yeah, very nice. Okay, Tyson's serve was beyond that mid-court line, so he is still gonna get a point there, I, as well as myself. So we've got two, four. Correct. Is that yep. right? Two to four. Sorry. <laughs> ah, too good. Good point. Okay, so each got one there. Yep, right? yep. So, so five, be... two here. Five, or so sorry, five, three. three, correct. Five, three coming this way. I'm taking your point. <laughs> 53. Yep. Uh. Oh, I, I wanted it. it. Okay, I wanted so let's it. Uh, so talk, talk about that real quick. So let's, let's talk about just some dinking tactics here. For sure. I got pulled out of position. Um, I kind of more so, uh, not floated one, but I reset it and kind of purposely popped it up a little bit. You took pace off intentionally, right? Took pace off and I mean more so, uh, yes, I'm trying to reset, but also too, I'm trying to bait Kyle into speeding up yeah. and, taking, and taking some bait in here, right? Yeah. Um, obviously, Kyle was a little indecisive there. Yep. Whether he was going to take it off the bounce or take it out of the yeah, air. Yeah, so I mean, visually, I saw that the ball looked a little higher. Yeah. I was definitely trying to take it out of the air, but as it got to me, I realized that he hit it so slow, it was dying in a hurry. So at that point, I was a little off balance, and I had to play a half volley when I was falling forward a little bit. Right. And then that's where the error came from. And I, I think, too, like there's. Uh, Something to be said here, um, most of us don't recognize how much time we actually have right. from the kitchen line. I right. mean, even at the highest level, it's tough when you're in this position and you're leaning in, um, you know, not to get overextended, but know that you have a lot more time than you think. Right. 
Okay. Right, here we go. Okay, three seven. Three seven. when it gets fun. <laughs> ah! you, you weren't supposed to go there. <laughs> too good. Too good, okay. too good. So, and, and I popped it up, and as you can see, I probably gave it away because I'm sitting here camp in middle. <laughs> waiting for that middle ball. I think Kyle probably saw it. Yeah. Went at my left hip. So know that, like, don't always choose your first option. When you have lots of time, don't always choose the, the first option that has blinking green lights that says, you know, come here. Right. right. Kyle took his time, let me slide over. He saw I was, I was sitting on a forehand, and he went back behind me on this left. It was very nice. Yeah. Right. Uh, so 7-5. Let's, let's go last one now. here. You know, when you, when you have a speed up or you have a ball to be aggressive on and you're playing somebody who probably counters well, I would say be a bit more selective with the location. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 75? Yep. Okay. Uh. Uh, 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 uh. Get over! Get over! Get <laughs> That's good. That's good plan. Hold it. Okay, guys. So game recap. So this was uh, essentially a skinny singles game, but focused around that serve and specifically that serves depth. So what we want you to start re uh, realizing is that as you serve deeper, you're usually going to get a little bit shorter returns. With those shorter returns, it gives you more options to drive or an easier time on that drop to neutralize that advantage earlier. So uh, essentially scoring is just regular uh, skinny singles, but rally scoring. Whether you win or lose the point, you're alternating servers uh, after every point. After two, after for each of you have served one side, go ahead and practice just uh, getting some practice in on the other side as well. Um, and then the bonus point that we're giving for this is for a deep serve beyond that mid-court line. So we're essentially just playing it out, but uh, if your serve is deep enough, you're always going to get that one bonus point regardless of if you win or lose a point. Something to think about here is, um, you know, obviously we can, we can do damage by getting depth on the serve, pushing the returner back, putting pressure on the returner, you know, Kyle talked about earlier, and more so like enhances you to get a shorter reply, you know, in that scenario. Um, you know, obviously take into account level specific stuff. If you're in a position where you're probably not as consistent with your serve, nothing wrong with just guiding the serve in, being consistent. I would just really focus on, even, even though you're not going to add pace, just focus on really uh, gaining depth and, and being consistent with that depth uh, if you're not going to trust your paddle head speed. Um, you know, if you're in a position where you like driving third balls, it probably makes sense to want to use that one-two combo and look to, you know, have license to swing on the serve and then follow it up with, with that drive. Um, you know, I think something that we talked about, I mean, it's not relative towards serving, but something we talked about in like this last topic was, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're playing um, somebody who likes to, or sorry, if you're playing somebody with uh, really good hands um, and you have a speed up, just think about being very selective with the location. Or like, you know, Kyle had a high ball. He saw me kind of sitting on that high ball and I was sitting middle and I was waiting for a forehand. He, he took his sweet time. He didn't speed up right away, and he went right back to my left hip. So I think just, just being selective there. And then also, too, um, you know, uh, there was one point where I tried to reset my dink back in the middle, and then Kyle got a little indecisive on whether to take it out of the air, take it off the bounce. Uh, so just know that you have a lot more time than you think out here. Yeah, by you adding extra height, slowing it down, it gave you time. It visually looked like more of a pop-up to yeah, me than sure. it actually was, and I got a little off balance. And so it's a way of not just relying on errors from your opponent, but when you can make the appropriate type of shot, you can earn some errors from your opponent.